Mary, as we saw so artistically depicted by our actors with this divine encounter, we are find out through an angel, a messenger, or <clears throat> some type of divine intervention that she is going to have a baby. She will be the God-bearer. She will have her life turned upside down. Her plans, whatever they had been before this encounter, would drastically change. It would be harder. Life would be difficult. There would be hardships that she could not have imagined, and no doubt fear consumed her. The angel continued the conversation. Your old cousin Elizabeth, Mary, is also going to have a baby. Nothing is impossible with God. I suspect there was a long pause between those words of the angel and Mary's response. Like any of us who receive news that will interrupt the rest of our lives, she needed time to process. What? When? How? Why me? Why not me? Eventually, she lifts her head, she sets her jaw resolutely, and she speaks. Well, then here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Mary is a rock star. As brave as she is, she knows she'll need support if she's to be the carrier of the divine message, the word, bringer of the good news of salvation, liberation, and love. She will need have to learn how to carry this message with confidence, with passion, and with joy. Because as much as she can tell people what's going on, words often remain unconvincing without that surety the passion, the affirmation and witness that comes from deep within. So she goes to her elderly cousin, Elizabeth. Now, once she sees Elizabeth shriveled with age, yet plump with promise, she remembers the angel's words, nothing is impossible with God. And when the old woman feels her baby leap with joy on the inward parts of her being, Elizabeth is so moved, she stands up and declares all that God is doing within her and in their lives. Blessed are you among women, she sings, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed am I, blessed are we, blessed is the Lord, blessed, blessed. Spirit of the song surrounds Mary and envelops her and fills her with confirmation and affirmation and holy, godly joy. She is the host of the Holy Spirit of God, the carrier of the divine word and world-changing message that will shine light into the dark places and bring salvation to the lost. And the joy of this truth fills her to overflowing as she bursts into song. My soul magnifies the Lord. God has done great things. God is all powerful. God has done impossible things. God is coming. God is here. God is. We have spent a year, my friends, in our backyard learning that God is. Amen? God is in me. God in you. God has planted seeds of hope and songs of praise in each one of us. Each of us God-bearers, bringers of the divine word, carriers of the Holy Spirit of God. Each of us holds a message of truth that the world needs to hear. And we've shared our joy with each other. We've been affirmed by each other. We've been affirmed by the Elizabeths in our midst. Yes, we are blessed, blessed. God is. But Mary, if you look to the right, the backyard fence just swung open. It's time to learn to sing our song out in the neighborhood because God's message needs to be shared. Amen?
God's message needs to be shared. Amen? Amen. Like the angel, like Elizabeth, like Mary, how can we sing with confidence and passion and joy to those who have not heard our song before? And it occurred to me earlier this week that what we could really use, for lack of a better term, is a singing lesson. Many of the same techniques used to help a vocalist optimize their gifts are totally applicable to us sharing our song. So I've actually asked Howard to help me define some of these terms and then illustrate some of the things that might help us learn to sing our message with clarity and with joy. So how are we? Okay, so maybe just like to stand there for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do like the basics of what the term is, and maybe Howard, you can define for us what what is the musical terms, and then uh, I'll follow up. So the first thing that any singer needs, right, is vocal health. So can you spoke to speak to that. Uh, vocal health. I tell my choir, a sick singer is not much good to me. So we have to take care of our bodies. We have to take care of our voice. We have to get enough rest. We have to hydrate well, that's not soda, and it remains to flush your system constantly with water. Uh, I always tell them that it takes three or four hours for the water to reach the cellular level in their local cords. They just can't do a quick call and now I'm set. But it's a preparation of hydrating. First thing in the morning when they wake up so they can start choir a couple hours later with me. And uh, getting their health, optimum rest, taking your vitamins, all those things. Stay away from caffeine. And all of those things are true for us on a spiritual level. In spiritual terms, what is vocal health? Vocal health is making sure that we are well rested, that we consider ourselves valuable creations of God, that we understand that we're accepted by God, that we love, we are loved by God, and we take time every day to acknowledge those things, to nurture those things, and to build our basic relationship and affirmations with God, okay? So the second one is breath. Breath. Um, so in my high school choir, if they're singing out of tune, the first thing I address is not listen. You would think, like, oh, you just hit a wrong note. And I do address that. But really the first thing is, did you prepare for the full breath first? Because you'll never be able to sing those high notes if you can't fill up first a good full tank of air. Uh, so that's always yeah. the first step. And that's always the first step for us as well, spiritually. Breath, we, and I think we've talked about this several times, breath and spirit are the same word in Hebrew. So when we prepare, what does that mean? We take full breath, that means we need a big dose of spirit before we go out. Every time we take a breath, we breathe in that spirit. Every time we breathe out, we breathe out spirit. Our awareness of that and where our breath comes from is crucial before we go out and try to sing. Otherwise, we have no fuel. And it also reflects our prayer life, spending time with the neighbor every single day, being able to understand that this spiritual connection that we have is integral to every single part of the ministry that we do. The third one is alignment. So some people call alignment uh, posture, but I switched over three years ago to, to an alignment posture. It sounds very rigid and you know, stand up straight and tall like a soldier. It's not really good for singing. So alignment, if you ever taken a yoga class, you have that mountain pose where your, your legs are open like this underneath your hips and you lift from your sternum. And that simple act of this little bone that connects our ribs from one side to the other, that little bone here, you pull that up. It sets all our alignment, our spine, our ribs in proper perspective, our shoulders can relax, and then we can really grab the full breath when we need it. And we need it constantly through our singing repertoire, even just a split second, just and our lungs fill up with air if we're aligned right. Mm -hmm. And our alignment speaks to exactly the same thing. We don't go out as rigid soldiers. We go out just being ourselves. Recognizing that our body can relax in God if we are standing confident in what we believe, in the breath support that we receive, we can we can give a, keep a 
people a good way of understanding us by the way we approach them. So the last one, uh, the next one, I'm sorry, is finding your tone. Because I know this is tough for some of us that are not singers to understand, like, you know, where do I fit? It's complex for those who are singers. Okay. We're always tweaking, modifying, we're maturing. Even now, I'm 57 years old, I'm still maturing into my tone. So, uh, but some basics would be you have your breath, you have your alignment. Now we talk about what happens as the air comes up through your vocal cords. What happens in this in this uh, this oral cavity here, your pharynx, what we call that. And so I tell the students like you've got to create a giant space. It's going to feel like you. I, this is going to be funny. They used for high school because they remember it. They say you've got to feel like like you're you have a hamster in the back of your mouth. Oh, I good. And so you. Big space back there. You know, they all gross out and like they think it's but you have to create a big space if you want to be full tone. Uh, so all right. So uh, yeah. Without going with the various things. <laughs> Finding your tone understands uh, to me that it's a spirituality that we all have our unique voice. All of us, if we're if we can tap into it, all of our tones, we always continue growing into our tones. We always mature into our voice. Because God never stay, lets us stay the same. Right? Linda, you know what I always tell them too? Like they find that there's an aha moment. And then I say, you know, like for the next phrase, can you live in that space? Not just like visit, but now we have to live there. Now you know what the standards of like abiding in that space. And you know what that, and you can, you can relate to that now, right? We come to a certain place with God and maybe we can plateau there for a little while and understand that God gives us that time to be able to sit with it, understand who we are and this new phase of life before we go on to the next thing that God has for us. Okay, so this one's a tough, a tough one because I know that we've heard the term perfect pitch and and you think, like, is there such a thing, and what exactly is pitch, and how do we stay on pitch? Uh, it's complicated, and uh, if you have perfect pitch, it's because you acquired it in a very, very young age. But we can teach really close to perfect pitch. Um, the when when you hear uh, singers a little out of tune, once again we go back to the basics. What's your breath doing? Like? Is that engaged? Uh, is your alignment tall? If you have a tall space. Up in here, is it really tall? And then the next thing is that you really have to listen to yourself. You have to listen to the people singing next to you. Uh, you have to listen to the overall group. How do we tune? If I'm a bass, how do I tune my sopranos across the way? So it's a combination of all those things. The basics have to be there. Then yes, very sensitive, careful listening. And, and you know the importance of listening. We've talked about this. We can definitely become out of tune with our community if we're not cognizant of the people around us. We have to make sure that we're listening to them all the time, listening to each other, listening to the Holy Spirit in our lives, and that keeps us in that perfect pitch. And I think that goes hand in hand also with diction, having that fear. Um, you know, the continents and things like that, right? Making sure that that message is clear at the same time. And then, how about um, music theory and continuing stuff and things like that? Uh, is it, I mean, is it really part of it? Do you have to go for it? Yes, you do need to have, to have an understanding of some music notation. You have to be literate if you want to really progress and, and mature as a singer. Uh, um, so, yeah, you have to spend some time learning the nuts and the bolts, the nitty gritty, examining your text and uh, examining like what jumps, what intervals are happening, how does the harmony surround you. The break forth that we learned this, that we sang this morning was full of that. We were listening very carefully to basses have a descending line, they pass it over to the tenors, altos pick it up, sopranos pick up, and so uh, you'll be constructed, we have to know the theory and, or the, the construction. Of that piece. In that same way, we need to study. Okay, and that's one thing that we have we have a small amount of 
right now in the Bible study in the morning, but it's up to each of us to continue our own Bible study to understand what the words mean. The transformation is great. The connection with God is great. All of that is important and integral to us as Christians. But there's a discipleship aspect that says, yes, I'm going to take this on myself and really learn my music theory or my scripture and my study. Understand some theory, understand some theology. And then, so this way, when people do come and ask us questions, we're not just empty words of saying, but it's great, but God is really great. And we can be able to rely on that scripture and that knowledge to be able to carry us through. And the last thing I want us to just talk about is just being able to stay motivated. Because I know lots of us are motivated in the shower or in our car when we have the music turned on the way up, right? But how do we stay motivated? The, well, the whole world is a singer, so <laughs> we all love to sing. And, uh, for me, when I'm in, in rehearsal in the morning with my high schoolers, and uh, I don't know, we take some time, we, we sometimes reflect on what are you grateful for today? It has really nothing to do with the repertoire so much, but, uh, and I'll have, um, you know, Yvonne will say, I'm grateful for uh, my relationships, or whatever. Or sometimes it's just silly things, like I'm glad I had three minutes of stopping and dumping donuts this morning. You know, but uh, that helps a lot, and we start feeling like, hey, we're all in this together. We're all tired, but we're all in this together, and we can make good things happen. Yeah, and that, and that goes right back to community. Joy said something interesting in the choir circle. You know, uh, maybe you don't know this, but we pray before worship every every week with the worship leaders. And so Joy said something interesting in the circle today. Because she won't be here for a couple of months, and she said, I just want you to know how much this group means to me. And right there speaks to the community that's, that is in that choir, this group right here, but also speaks to the larger community of our church. We have to come back. Once we're out and we're ministering and we're sharing and all of that stuff, we come back to community. It keeps us motivated. This place then becomes a place of encouragement, of motivation, where we get rested, renewed, and rejuvenated to go back out again. So each of us, I think, at this point can understand a little bit or hopefully understand a little bit that this message that we carry the messenger that we are messengers of god that we are angels and our voice is important out there because without it we have a lot of silence and there's a lot of darkness be gracious be blessed know that you are sent each of you with a message from god you are the God of bearers. Carriers of the divine word. Spread the message. Shine the light. We need it. And may the God of peace and mercy and grace be in our you this Christmas and always. Amen.